subject to write about. He has a very short career. Already you can see John McCain and his people struggling to find uh, critiques of Obama that work. And why is that? Uh, in part, I do think it's also the changed nature of campaigning. For example, how are you going to write about the anonymous emails that circulate uh, surrounding Barack Obama? What's the accountability factor there? Uh, as you know, there have been a variety of, of, of very untrue or, or negative things. I'm sure some of you received these in, in your email inboxes. Uh, just this last week, uh, this issue hit the front pages of several newspapers when uh, Louis Farrakhan endorsed Barack Obama. And that immediately sort of raised concerns about uh, you know, his connections, his support for the state of Israel. Uh, Obama disavowed Farrakhan. Hillary Clinton challenged him in a debate and said, well, wait a minute, uh, you know, you didn't just, you should disavow him and protect him. Uh, and, you know, there was a real semantic argument, but I think it highlighted a challenge for us. You want to read the Washington Post, you want to know, well, is Barack Obama really pro-Israel or not? Does he have a record, uh, you know, that in any way, raises legitimate questions about that in the way that some of those emails that people have been receiving have gotten. So one of the things that we've started this year that's probably, I think, a great new use of the internet and for political journalism is something called the fact checker. And what we've done is we've taken one of our most experienced uh, correspondents, a uh, terrific guy, he's the guy who figured out that Madeleine Albright, uh, when she became Secretary of State, was actually Jewish and even she didn't know it. Um, and Michael, Michael is a fabulous sort of old style correspondent. There's nothing technologically savvy or webby about him. And that's also something that I love because it shows that, you know, this is just a vehicle for unlocking our journalism. And he writes a blog called The Fact Checker and we publish it in the newspaper as well. And he assigns Pinocchios uh, to those candidates uh, who have the biggest whoppers. <laughs> and, uh, you know, there's not that many for Pinocchios, but if you get one, you're really in trouble. And it's, it's been a big success. It's been cited in debates. Actually, candidates have been asked about uh, Michael's fact-checking uh, of their words. It's been cited in newspaper editorial pages and, and all over the place. Uh, and the campaigns take it very seriously. So I think that's a promising new model of accountability journalism, and I'm hopeful uh, that that will trickle down and at the local level. Uh, at every level, you should see uh, you know, robust media exercises, fact-checking the candidates, local elections, state elections, national elections, uh, moving forward. Um, I guess I would just leave you with this question about transformation. And what is the phenomenon that we're seeing right now that's causing people to flood your polling stations, uh, that's causing this enormous burst of excitement, uh, you know, a real generational uh, outpouring uh, we don't know for sure whether Obama's going to win in Texas and Ohio or whether the campaigns will keep on fighting till Pennsylvania on April 22nd or even all the way to the first brokered convention, uh, certainly in my lifetime. Um, but I think we do know that this has been an election that has engaged people uh, in a wholly different way. Uh, it's, it's certainly been one of those races that has lived up to its advanced hype. And uh, in this day and age, it's hard to do that. Uh, there's a, there's a really terrific piece of reporting uh, by one of our political reporters in today's paper from Texas. Uh, it's the story of a Texas state senator, uh, a longtime politician in the Rio Grande Valley, uh, and his son, uh, a new state representative. Uh, they're a prominent Latino political family in South Texas. And a few months ago, the son shocked the entire establishment in South Texas by deciding that he was going to be the Barack Obama campaign chair in that part of the world. His father, uh, you know, sort of indulgently said, do what you have to do, and meanwhile has risen from his sick bed to lead Hillary Clinton's uh, efforts. Uh, so we'll see what happens uh, in that particular uh, family dinner table on Tuesday. But I was really struck by the dialogue that the, the two of these, this father and son, were having in front of uh, our reporter last week. and. Uh, Eddie Lucio uh, Jr., that's the father, state senator, uh, and Eddie Lucio III uh, is the son, state representative. And, you know, they just, they just have one of these classic moments of, you know, dad said, look, son, you know, I appreciate your enthusiasm, but you're just a little bit naive, aren't you? 
You know, I can sometimes just look at him and say, Dad, the world is going to pass you by. <laughs> <laughs> so in a lot of ways, I think that that's, you know, that's the challenge we've been given, is uh, how to figure out how not to let the world pass us by uh, with this one. So thank you, and Peter and I are really looking forward to taking the rest of the day. Yeah. <laughs> 